This is a car jack that thieves use to break U locks. This is a Volvo car jack. Take note of the arm that would be used to fit underneath your car and lift it, and the base plate which would be put against the ground. This is a modified car jack. What a thief has done is he's taken off the arm and cut a groove to fit onto one side of the lock. The base plate, which is normally about three inches in diameter, has been removed and a steel band has been added to the base to reinforce the strength of the bottom of this jack. He's also cut two grooves in here in order so that he can grip on the arms of the lock easier. What a thief would do, he would clamp the lock on in this fashion. He would actually pre-mark the jack so when he went to crank the jack, he would know that it only took about one to two cranks to make contact. The thief then knows that it takes about five more to break the lock. The way that bad bones defeat theft is by three different steps. The first is to limit the excess space that a thief has to work with within the lock. As you can see from this bicycle, the bones have been used to fill up places where a space had previously existed. A thief with a car jack will have great difficulty inserting his jack into this lock. However, if the thief does manage to get his jack in, then the second way the bones work to stop theft will kick in. He's going to find that his jack won't be strong enough. His bones increase the strength of the lock by as much as three times. A thief who puts a jack into this lock and continues to crank on it will eventually destroy his jack. You can see what happened to this jack that was used on a lock that had bad bones. It's reduced the base of the jack. It spread itself out. And secondly, it torqued the jack around and stripped the screw-tight mechanism inside the jack, thereby making it an ineffective theft tool. And thirdly, both of these articles act as a visual deterrent. When a thief sees these, he knows that he should just move on to the next bike because it will be much easier for him to steal. Now that we've talked about some of the ways that a thief can break a U-lock and some of the tools that a cyclist can use to defend against those methods, let's talk about a myth that we've all heard about. And that is the use of super cold substances such as Freon to freeze and break a U-lock. The reality of the matter is, very few bikes are stolen in this manner. Many crime prevention units have done their own experiments on the use of Freon to break a lock. The truth is, it's very difficult to even obtain the right grade of Freon. And even if you can obtain it, there are many steps in its use. A thief would first have to strip the coating off the lock, apply the Freon, allow it to sit for up to 10 minutes, and then strike it with a hammer until it's shattered. When the steel shatters, that would leave fragments on the ground. If you are finding bits of steel, then perhaps you've encountered a lock that has been frozen with Freon and nitrogen. But in the majority of your bicycle thefts, if it involves the violation of a U-lock, it was probably done by either the New York method or by the carjack method. This concludes our presentation for today. I hope that we've been able to teach you something about bicycle theft. Much of what we've learned has come from crime prevention units, and we'd like to pass what we've learned from some on to others. For those of you who are experiencing some of these methods of U-lock violation, we hope that we've helped to teach you about the ways that your students can help to protect themselves. And for those of you who maybe haven't yet faced much of a problem with U-locks being broken, we hope that you can learn what to look for and what you may find in the future. We thank you for your time today.